So in today's video, I want to talk about the importance of shutter speed and especially when photographing things like waterfalls. Shutter speed is a very strong tool in your camera that you can use to change the look of your photos. Now of course when everything in your image is standing still, shutter speed won't really matter that much. But as soon as you have movement, shutter speed becomes a very important instrument for your photos. The tricky thing though is to use it correctly. So let's go find some waterfalls and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so I found this cool little spot next to the trail and it's a really beautiful scene here. So we've got some moss covered rocks and then a little stream going up to the main waterfall in the back there. So uh, it's looking really nice. So what a lot of people tend to do is to always do super long exposures when photographing things like waterfalls. And I used to do that as well. The thing is that you lose a lot of texture in the water and everything just kind of becomes this big blob. Or maybe you're always using a faster shutter speed because you're not using a tripod. And then you're kind of getting too much texture, especially in things like the foreground when you have these pools in the waterfall. You would want to maybe smooth that out a little bit so that it doesn't become too distracting and too messy. So we need to find some kind of mid-ground between this very long exposure or a really fast shutter speed. So in this composition here, I'm trying to photograph this small waterfall and then the big waterfall in the back. And there's quite a bit of water coming down here and I don't want to blur all of that out. So if I would do a very long exposure, all of the water from the bigger waterfall and the smaller one here would be completely blurred out. I would have no detail and no texture in there. So that means that for these waterfalls, I'm going to want a bit of a faster shutter speed to maintain that detail and that texture and also to get that action of the water. Because if everything is a long exposure, you really lose all of that action and the motion of the water. But at the same time, at the bottom of my frame here, I have the pool which I do want to smooth out completely because I think it will look a lot nicer and with the polarizer on you'll be able to see the rocks on the bottom and all of those details very well. And then there is this little part here where you can see some bubbles coming through and that's a part where I'm going to do different exposures and then later on in post see what I like best because I do find it kind of interesting that if we see those bubbles in a not so long exposure that they create a bit more of a flow, a bit more of a line in the image. Okay, so now that I know that for this composition I need to use a few different shutter speeds, it's time to take those photos. So we're gonna start with the bottom of the composition here, which is the water just by the rock. And like I said, I wanna smooth that water out so that we can see the rocks on the water here and get a little bit more detail in all of that as well. So I only have a polarizer on there, no ND filter, there's not that much ambient light so I'll be able to get my exposures without having to use an ND filter. So like I said I want to smooth this out entirely so that requires a longer shutter speed and anywhere between one and two seconds is going to be fine because there's not that much motion in the water here. So I'm setting my shutter to two seconds and as you can see the image is overexposed so I'm compensating that with my aperture. At f16 it seems fine at least for the bottom of the frame here and ISO 100 is fine as well. So I am using a two second timer here 
because for long exposure you want to make sure that everything is stable you don't want any shake on your camera so now that we have our shutter speed set and our exposure is correct it's time to take the first photo So moving up in our composition, it's time to expose for the waterfall right here. So that little waterfall in the middle of the composition. So I'm moving my focal point more or less to the middle, right there by the waterfall. And like I said, I don't want to blur that waterfall out completely, so a two second exposure would be way too long. So I'm going to go somewhere around one fourth or one sixth of a second. And as you can see, the image is underexposed. So again, I'm compensating with the aperture first. I don't want to go anywhere lower than F8 because I do want to get everything in focus. So F8 is still a little bit underexposed. So then I have my ISO still. I'm going to set it at 200 because I am exposing for the rocks and then doing another exposure only for the water. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the photo for the water. So I'm not gonna change anything except for the ISO. So I'm gonna drop it to 100 or maybe even 80 because the water is white and the rocks are black. So the water is going to be overexposed much easier than the rocks. And I don't wanna change anything else like the focal point, the obviously not the shutter speed and the aperture just the ISO so that I can get the exposure of the water correct. Okay, so next I'm going to move up into the composition again. So changing my focal point to the back where the larger waterfall is. And the settings are gonna be pretty much the same than for the waterfall here in the middle. So one sixth of a second, F8, and then ISO 80 for the actual water, and then ISO 200 for the surroundings. I ended up using four photos to create this final image. So one for the foreground, one for the midground, one for the background, and then one to blend in some water that was overexposed. And I used Lightroom for the basic editing and Photoshop for the blending and the finishing touches. Okay, so I found another really cool waterfall here and I just wanted to show you that it's not always the case that you would want to smooth out that foreground, that pool of the waterfall. Because in this example here, it's taking up a lot of space in the image and if I would smooth it out completely, it would just be black. Because right here, I can't really see the bottom of the water, so I can't see any rocks or anything like that. So it'll just be a big black spot in the frame. It'll be a bit too heavy on the bottom. So I'm actually using a faster shutter speed for the foreground here as well, because again, there's all of these little bubbles and this foam from the waterfall that is coming towards the camera. And if I would do a very long exposure, all of that would be smoothened out and you wouldn't really see any of that. So by doing a slightly faster shutter, I still have those little details in the foreground and making that foreground a little bit more interesting. Okay, so I've been experimenting with a few different shutter speeds here for that foreground. And I seem to have found that one second is about the sweet spot because I don't want to completely freeze all of this. It would be too messy. But at one second, I get like these little squiggly lines of the bubbles moving towards the camera. And I'm taking a few different shots that later I can blend together. And hopefully that will create some more interest in the foreground. So I'm at one second exposure, F8 and ISO 80. So just focusing only on the immediate foreground here, because you can see the rest of the image is overexposed. 
but the foreground here is very dark. So I'm just worrying about my exposure of the foreground and I'll blend that with an exposure for the background as well. I really like how this image turned out, especially when seeing it on full screen, those squiggly lines in the foreground really turned out the way I imagined. I used a few different exposures and blended those together to have some more of those lines in the foreground. And like I said earlier, I went back to this first waterfall and shot this composition, which in my opinion seems to work a little bit better than the first one. And there were so many beautiful other little waterfalls on this trail, so here are a few more photos that I took that afternoon. All right, that was it for this waterfall photography episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.